Well, we're at the part of the program now where we've invited um, the presidential candidates to come speak and tell us what they believe is in the best interests of this country. Um, our first speaker is going to be a surrogate for former Governor Martin O'Malley in Maryland. I'd like to introduce to you the former Secretary of Labor for the state of Maryland, Mr. Alex Sanchez. Thank you so much. It is my great pleasure to be here. Let me start by uh, recognizing a couple of folks. One that has not been recognized yet is Commissioner Mark Now. Would you please be recognized as a great supporter of the campaign and friend of the O'Malley campaign? Thank you very much. I especially want to recognize President Brackett. Thank you so much for sparing. Your time is valuable, and 10 minutes on your program is a, is a great deal, so I appreciate it very, very much. And I want to let folks know that while Governor O'Malley can't be here, he did send his family. Uh, working up here hard in New Hampshire is his uh, son, Will, and his daughter, Grace, uh, over there at the booth. And Grace, I know, is a proud member of the AFT. Now, one of the reasons that I got to believe that Governor Martin O'Malley uh, nominated me to be a Secretary of Labor is because we have common labor beliefs. Because I represent his views as a supporter of labor, as a believer of labor, and as a member of the labor community. I'm proud to say that I worked through college as a member of Labor's Local 310 in Cleveland, Ohio. So when I say brothers and sisters, I know what brothers and sisters means. We say that because we are family. And family's number one responsibility is to take care of one another. It is a great honor to be here in New Hampshire on Labor Day, surrounded by people who care about American workers and building a strong middle class. Now, there's a lot that I could tell you about Governor O'Malley. I could talk about his commitment to the environment, how he said no to offshore drilling, but yes to wind power. I could talk about his commitment to sensible immigration reform, how he wants to not deport 11 million new Americans, but bring 11 million Americans into the on the books economy, bring them out of the shadow economy to raise wages for all of us. I could talk about his commitment to Wall Street reform, about the pr uh, proposal he's put forward, his progressive plan to put an end to too big to fail, too big to jail financial institutions. I could talk about his commitment to foreign policy and his 3D foreign policy plan that is development, diplomacy, and defense. I could talk about his commitment to student debt relief, about his pledge to have all students have access to a high quality debt free college education within five years. I could talk about his commitment to fair and transparent finance laws, to overturning Citizens United and ensuring that elected leaders are held accountable to the people, not to the special interests. I could talk about all of those things. Uh, but we have a long program today, so I want to focus on what Martin O'Malley has actually done. What is his track record? Anyone can stand up here talking about what a presidential candidate will do. They're all going to say, I'll create jobs, I'll lower taxes, and i got to think that some will come up and say, I support organized labor. But let me tell you about someone who's actually done it. The candidate that has a real honest-to-God record to run on, to stand on, and to be proud of. Governor Martin O'Malley is not the only presidential candidate who holds progressive values, but he is the only candidate for president who has 15 years of executive office experience as a big city mayor and governor who has acted on those progressive values and turned those progressive values into actions. He is a principled progressive on issue after issue, and he's worked to forge public opinion, not just to follow it. Now, I was Governor O'Malley's Secretary of Labor, so let me focus on that. He has always stood with labor, and he has a record in Maryland to prove it. He didn't just talk about protecting workers, he actually did it. And when some people, even in the face of the recession, said, now is not the time to stand with labor, he took action. And what he did was he signed the fair share legislation for public sector unions, but went further and extended the law's protection to higher education. And he signed legislation expanding collective bargaining rights, but he went further and he signed executive orders expanding collective bargaining rights to home health care aides and child care workers. And he signed legislation requiring prevailing wage on projects like public schools, but he went further and protected prevailing wage legislation in public-private partnership law, which became law under his leadership in Maryland. He enacted the Maryland Parental Leave Act, which requires businesses to offer six weeks of family leave without the possibility of job loss when they return. 
He signed the Buy American bill that requires American-made purchases on public works. And he successfully fought for protections under the Workplace Fraud Act, preventing workers from being misclassified as independent contractors, ensuring that workers are not robbed of the wages and benefits that they have earned. taking the same approach with his campaign. It's about actions, not words. And that's why he stood with the workers at the Trump Hotel in Las Vegas when they were denied their right to organize. He didn't just stand with them figuratively. figuratively. He stood with them literally to fight for their fundamental right to collectively bargain. You see, Governor O'Malley knows that we need to focus on the American family and giving the American family a fighting chance to compete in today's economy. So increasing the minimum wage, Martin O'Malley has done it. Overtime pay for overtime work, Martin O'Malley has done it. Making it easier, not harder, to join a labor union, Martin O'Malley has done it. Reforming our labor laws to hold employers accountable when they prevent employees from collective bargaining for better wages, Martin O'Malley has done it. And he didn't do it at the exclusion of other areas and other priorities. Governor O'Malley expanded fu funding for public schools, even in the face of the recession. And under Governor O'Malley's leadership, Maryland's public schools were ranked number one in the nation five years in a row. And he focused on that to make college more affordable. He froze tuition at Maryland's public colleges and universities for four years. For four years, the cost of going to college in Maryland did not increase one penny. But did all of this slow an economic recovery? Governor Martin O'Malley recovered 100% of the jobs in Maryland that were lost during the Great Recession, making the state a leader in job creation, outpacing our neighboring states of Pennsylvania and Virginia who tried to cut their way out of the recession. And it was not a recovery for the few, it was a recovery for the many. Martin O'Malley raised wages for Marylanders, signing the first living wage law in the nation and making Maryland one of the first states to raise its minimum wage. And critically importantly, these priorities weren't funded, they weren't carried on the backs of Maryland taxpayers. In fact, 86% of Marylanders now pay less in state income tax than they did when Martin O'Malley took office in Maryland. But let me tell you a story of what I know of Governor O'Malley. When we worked to pass the DREAM Act in Maryland, and the DREAM Act says simply, if you're a resident of Maryland, and you pay taxes in Maryland, you can go to college, university in Maryland at the in-state tuition rate. Seems pretty simple. You live there, you pay taxes there, you get the in-state tuition rate. But there are those who made that issue about immigration, about ethnic minorities, and so it became you know, very, very active as to what this actually meant. So I went to the governor and I said, look, my last name is Sanchez. This is important to me, this is important to my family, this is important to my culture and my history. Put this on me. I can move this ball forward for you, so let me take it, let me take the heat and run with it, and you don't have to get involved in this. And what you need to know about Martin O'Malley is he didn't get back to me on that, because he didn't have to. The very next day, without getting back to me, the Baltimore Sun ran a front page story of how the governor was going to use every part of his political office and every power he had as governor to pass the DREAM Act. And that's exactly what we did. We passed the DREAM Act the same session that we passed marriage equality, so there was a lot going on. Governor O'Malley never shied away from the tough battle and doing the right thing. He supported the DREAM Act because he knows that the best way to lift wages, to secure worker rights, to protect national security, and to create a common economic prosperity is to be inclusive, not exclusive. And he's shown, he's shown that in Maryland, as across the United States, we cannot leave anyone behind in our efforts to build an ever-increasing, more diverse, more upwardly mobile middle class. Governor O'Malley is campaigning the New Hampshire way. He's shaking every hand, he's answering every question, and he's spending a lot of time here. So I encourage you to all come out to our headquarters, uh, South Willow Street here in Manchester, sign up today. There's folks here, lots of folks with the O'Malley campaign. And let me just say this, brothers and sisters, I look forward to New Hampshire making the right choice for President of the United States. On behalf of Governor O'Malley and myself, thank you very much.